The Last of Us is a fantastic game. It is one of the most critically acclaimed anime of all time, and once I had a chance to play it this year, I have to say, it deserves the hype. Like Nier, I went into it mostly blind. I didn't even know the genre, just that it was supposed to be a really good game. And well, the emotional power it packs is incredible. And the way it caused me to bond and connect with the characters is just unprecedented. I could feel the pain, the struggle, and just the weight of all the actions the characters took. But like my video on Nier, talking about all that would take far longer than I want to spend on a video for the 12 days. Instead, I want to focus on one aspect. The aspect that sold me on the game, and that is the prologue. This video will not contain spoilers, as much as any video about the game can avoid them. I came into it, as I said, knowing nothing, and I think this was a good thing, because I had no idea where the story would be going. Even if it was obvious from what had been released about the game, I did not know those things. So I think this mindset really helped me enjoy it more. So if you want to experience it blind, go not watch this video. But if you want me to talk a little bit about what makes it so special, well, keep watching. Or keep listening because I'm going to be lazy with the visual editing and probably do very little so there won't be much to look at. So yeah, feel free to tab out, listen to this in the background. That's what I do with a lot of my videos I watch. So yes. The prologue here is such an amazing start to the story. It establishes the characters, the world, the themes, where the story is going so well, along with an emotional weight that just permeates everything. It might not be anything exciting from a gameplay perspective, but that's not the point. That's not really the point of Last of Us as a whole. We can feel that things are going to go wrong soon. Or when they do start going wrong, that they are only going to get worse. And this feeling, this dread, ah, it's just so awesome. The game starts showing Sarah laying on a couch. Joel walks into the house. He's on the phone with Tommy, stressed out about work. But then Joel melts as he sees the watch that Ellie gives him for his birthday. And you can just feel the love that Joel and Sarah have for each other. They are also very human characters. Joel asks Sarah where she got the money for the watch. She responds by saying she sold drugs. And this sarcastic comment feels natural. It feels like something my sister would say. But the sarcasm doesn't feel forced or that they are engaged in a battle of wits like it feels like a lot of Western media does to establish the characters as strong, independent, or whatever. No, here they're just family, comfortable with each other. Then Sarah falls asleep, Joel carries her to bed, it's all very wholesome. But The Last of Us is not a cute and wholesome story. We start seeing this when the phone rings. Tommy is calling, Sarah answers, Tommy is in a panic about where Joel is. So Sarah goes to look for him. And I love how smooth the transition is from the movie cutscene thing to the actual gameplay. The game just does this so well. There's no breaking of immersion. And they also do the dialogue this way. As you walk, the characters just say what they are thinking. It's not like you go up to an NPC, press X, hear the dialogue, move on. No, they just say it as they're walking. And I also love how it feels to control Sarah. You can feel that she just woke up. She's a bit groggy. She doesn't know what's going on. And then you can even see her yawning. These just small details do so much for the game as a whole. And I also love the detail they put everywhere. And Sarah's room is a great example here. You have all the decorations that make it feel like her room. You have a picture of a cat calendar showing she likes cute animals. Not to mention the stuffed giraffes, which are a kind of motif all throughout the game. You also have a guitar, different music posters, showing that she loves music. And it's hinted through this that Joel is the one teaching her to play guitar, even though it is never explicitly stated throughout the game. There are so many not obvious things that you have to go to your way to look for, like a birthday card sitting on a desk. Reading it, you see that Joel is never around, that he and Sarah frustrate each other, that they have different tastes in music and movies and so on, but that she still loves him. She sees him as the greatest dad ever. In fact, this is a, an example of something I missed the first time through, only noticing it when I was replaying it to make this video. And again, this goes back to how real their love is. It's not some perfect rose-colored relationship like in Full Metal Alchemist with Maze Hughes. No, these are two characters. They have their differences, their frustrations, but their love is something greater than this. And the idea of love here, it goes far beyond Joel and Sarah too being a fundamental to the story of the game as a whole. 
So what they're doing here, they're setting up the idea in the prologue, and that is laying the foundation for the entire game. Anyway, moving on to what's actually happening, Sarah goes to look for Joel. She sees a news report about the infected as she does so, and I like how this slowly is building the tension. They're not throwing you into chaos and death right away. No, it's much slower. Having events happen around them that are bringing them closer to, well, what happens. As Sarah goes downstairs, she sees some explosions. There are police lights, dogs barking. And then she gets to Joel's cell phone, seeing that there are a ton of missed calls. And then the dog barking is silenced. Finally, she runs into Joel, but he's in a panic, causing her to freak out more. Then their neighbor crashes through the glass door, and Joel shoots him. This is a shock to innocent Sarah, and even Joel, though he is taking it better because he, well, has to. There is a difference between how the characters are viewing this versus how we are. If you know basically anything about Last of Us, you know it is a zombie shooter game. But Sarah does not know this. She has no idea what is going on. She doesn't know that the world they are about to be in is one where shooting zombies is common, even needed. And the game lets us feel her panic at this. Then Tommy shows up and Joel and Sarah get in his car and drive away. You still control Sarah here, though she is in the back seat. And while she's able to move around and look around, she isn't able to really control anything. Then as they're driving, Sarah asks the question, are they infected too? And you can just feel the characters want to deny it. But there's definitely a question in the back of their minds about what if they are. As they drive, they see a family alongside the road asking for help. Sarah and Tommy think that they should, but Joel tells them to keep going. While this is a minor event story-wise, it says a lot about Joel and especially makes sense if you understand the entire story of the game. He's a man who cares deeply about his family, but outside of it, not so much. He may be the hero of the game, but he really doesn't care about saving the world. Instead, he fights for himself and those close to him which again makes him human. As much as I love stories about those who want to be heroes and save the world, a character like Joel is much more grounded and relatable, making him work for a story like this. Then as they drive, get further into the city, a car rams into them, causing their car to roll over. And after being so on edge for the last few minutes, this just really was the shock that the game needed. The characters were shaken up too, Joel having to kick the window to get out and then being attacked by an infected as he did so. And then as Sarah gets out, you discover that her leg is broken, so Joel has to carry him. And then you start controlling Joel and you can feel how he is weighed down by Sarah, but he has a drive to run to get them to safety even if he has no idea where a safe place could be. A chaos unfolds around them. People are dead everywhere. A car crashes into a gas station and explodes, and then people are tripping and falling, but the others just pay the no heed. Sarah even makes a chilling statement that people are on fire. I know I keep talking about the whole emotional weight thing, but that's true. That is what the game is doing, and it is doing such a good job of it. Every action, every event, every word of dialogue, is meant to pull the player into the story and the feelings of these characters. And then they also have the subtle music, just amplifying this effect. As I speak these words, I cannot tell you what the music was, but I can tell you how it made me feel. Then as you run, there's a bit of fighting, Joel being attacked by an infected, and you have to mash square to basically push it away. This is a very simple gameplay interaction here, which I think is best. The game never took the time to tell you, like, here are all the mechanics, here's how you shoot things and all that. No, it just gave you something very simple, but that let the player react to the attack against Joel in a way that never broke the story that it was trying to tell. And then they eventually reach a kind of safe spot with Tommy telling Joel to go on without him. Tommy's logic is that Joel and Sarah can get away while Tommy can hold off the infected because he can run away if things get too bad. This is another small detail about the characters showing the type of person that Tommy is. He is probably the closest thing in the game to a truly good person. And he seems to be a bit of an idealist, though maybe that's me looking into it too much. He wants to find a way to save all of them, even willing to risk his life to do so. Then, a little bit more time passes and the prologue ends, with some events that I'm not going to spoil for you. Then we get the intro credits they roll, introducing who all made the game and all that. But then we get a message saying that there is a 20-year time skip. Well, to be perfectly honest, I was mad at seeing this. 
I was sold on the story of Sarah's character, an innocent girl thrown into a world falling apart. I wanted to see the story unfold through her eyes as she struggles with her family to survive. It only took 30 minutes, but in that time I connected with Sarah and I just wanted to see what is her story. And the game didn't give it to me. Yes, I am happy with where the game ended up going and that was awesome, but at the time I was really frustrated. I felt cheated. But this showed me how well the game can make me bond with the characters. So yes, Last of Us has an incredible prologue. It sets the stage so well with the characters, the world, the themes, all that, that I was excited to see where it would go, even if I did feel a little bit cheated. So that concludes my video for day three of the 12 days of anime. And I promise I will actually talk about anime tomorrow, assuming my computer doesn't like explode or anything, because that would really suck. But this probably will not be the last time I talk about Last of Us. I have at least one other video in mind that I will probably make in a couple of months, or if there are any other topics you want me to cover about that, or near, or another game you think I would like to cover, let me know. I'd be interested to hear your recommendations. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.